All these these lists, like see all these oils, these are considered you know environmentally safe. Doesn't mean they're human safe. I mean, I wouldn't drink citronella oil or things like that. If you simply only put a mixture or one of these things in there, you can go straight to market with a product and make a claim. If you're in the commercial world and you're doing extracts, you definitely don't want oils on that late in the game because it's going to soak in the plant. And you know, if you're extracting to make shatter wax, whatever you're going to do, you only want to pull out cannabis oils. You don't want a mixture of these other oils. What our product is about is it's safe through all stages. It's safe uh, to spray. You can spray it every day if you wanted to. It doesn't hang around long, but you know, it's it's safe that way, and that it's a control thing, and then it goes back to the environment. And essentially, our active ingredient, I think you and I have talked about this before, is uh, is monodiantriester to sucrose octanate. It's a sugar, it's a sugar type ester. What does it mean when your pesticide product says that they're approved on the 25B list? Well, in this video, we're going to get into it. You're here with Holt from Organishield and Mark Boutwell on PerfectGardens.com. Please remember to check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and hit the notifications for future videos like this. And if you haven't checked out our $2.99 monthly membership, make sure to join on your desktop because it is not available through your phone. Let's go ahead and get into the video. Make sure to hit the join button on the bottom of every video. So I'd like to go ahead and turn this over to Holt. Uh, first off, Holt, can you please introduce yourself? Tell us what company you're with. And then also, just because, like I've already said, Holt has one of the highest level of integrities I've ever met around the pesticide fungicide arena, which is there's so much information there, but it's a very untapped, uh, untapped, unspoken uh, area. So because of Holt and his high level of integrity, I've actually started to ask him to come onto the channel and we're going to begin to break down one pesticide and or fungicide at a time so that you guys have a full understanding of what you're putting on your plants and the proper application for these pesticides and fungicides. So Holt, please introduce yourself to the channel. Sure. Thank you, Mark. Um, my name is Holt Crowder. I work for a company called Organishield and Organishield happens to be a pest control or an IPM and it's a EPA registered uh, IPM, which means it's a little different than some of the other ones and that we actually had to prove our results and the EPA gave us a registration versus some of the other products that um, they may be on exemption list with their ingredients. Very cool. I absolutely love that. Holt, uh, can you please go ahead and share your screen? And sure, sure. So on our website, even we have, I keep talking to you about the fit for 25 B list. Here's the fit for 25 B list. Essentially what this is, is list of active ingredients may be used in non, non food use products under section four, eight. It's basically the, you know, the garbly goop from the government, but this is a list of the exemptions or they'll say we're 25, we're fit for 25 B. This is more for your edification mark as much as possible. All these, these lists, like see all these oils, these are considered you know, environmentally safe. doesn't mean they're human safe. I mean, I wouldn't drink citronella oil or things like that, but this is the list of things that, that they, that people will pull from it. Like, here's your peppermint oil. That was in one of those of things that you can put in there, essentially, you know, you can use them to grow crops or to, or to, uh, you know, as far as pesticides and things like that. So this is how these, a lot of these groups get around, um, having to, they go to market faster, essentially that, cause you know, it takes a long time to go through EPA registration because you have to have all the field trials and a lot of money. And then the government, they have to review everything you've done. If you simply only put a mixture or one of these things in there, you can go straight to market with a product and make a claim. That's kind of like, there's a product out there that I know of, and you may have heard of called trifecta and maybe we review it one day, but trifecta, you know, if you've ever bet the trifecta is three different things. And to me, it looks like a mixture of one of your favorite products, green cleaner, um, <laughs> Dr. Zymes. And uh, what was the other one? And I think, I think it was very similar also to lost coast. It was like, they took three of them and Oh, this take these three, these three products, their ingredients, it must be good. Well, the super make it right. But the reason they could go straight to market on that was because um, they were the only things in their product were off this list. And that's what the fit for 25B list is. And, and getting back to what you were talking about, as far as, you know, all you want to do is find something that's going to handle your bug problem, get it under control. And, you know, when is that the most scariest or you're most anxious about that is, is during those last four weeks, because when you're going from, you know, mid bloom to late bloom to harvest or whatever, late flower, whatever you want to call it, you know, some people, if you're in the commercial world and you're selling it, you call it those, the money, that's the money weeks, right? That's the money time because that's when you make your money and you don't want to screw it up at the end. And so I always worry about people that are going to go, go and just grab something off the shelf or someone recommended this and it's going to have oil and, and hey, it may kill their bugs, but then they've got this residue left in their, 
there's unwanted residue left on their plant or in their plant. You know, and, and on the commercial world, you don't see it quite as much because a lot of those things will pop a test. If you're in the commercial world and you're doing extracts, you definitely don't want oils on that late in the game because it's going to soak in the plant. And, you know, if you're extracting to make shatter wax, whatever you're going to do, you only want to pull out cannabis oils. You don't want a mixture of these other oils, even though they may, even if they were safe and you're just going to eat them, I want 100% cannabis oil in my cannabis oil. I don't want 5% corn oil or something, right? So um, finding products that are not going to, um, they're going to be safe from, you know, from the day you have a clone to the day you harvest. That's kind of what our product is about is it's safe through all stages. It's safe uh, to spray. You can spray it every day if you wanted to. It doesn't hang around long, but, you know, it's it's safe that way and that it's a control thing. And then it goes back to the environment and basically it helps the plant grow and your plant absorbs it. It gives a little kiss of CO2 at the same time. So that's kind of why I'm proud of what we've done. But the way I learned all this, Mark, was when we're, when we're trying to bring this thing to market, I was looking at what's the competitor, what's out there, what does it do, how does it work, okay, does it kill a bug, well, does it, is it safe after that? One of the things that I'm, I'm very proud about our product is that it is tolerance exempt. It, even if there was residue, it, it breaks down, you know, in five days or less, it's gone. It's day of harvest safe because it's you, literally, you could drink it, but um, one of the things that I think is uh, really good about it is it's tolerance exempt on in and on all food commodities. So this is the uh, code of federal regulations, and essentially our active ingredient, I think you and I have talked about this before, is, uh, is monodiantriester to sucrose octanate. It's a sugar, it's a sugar type ester. Uh, we're the only ones that make this particular molecule, but sugar esters are, you're already consuming them every day. They're in cosmetics, they're in uh, food products. Um, so basically what this says, that it has a, an exemption from requirement of tolerance established for residues of, oh, sorry, it's going to look kind of weird there, residues of sucrose oxygen weight. So if there was something left on your lettuce or whatever, and it showed up, there's no tolerance level because it's it's human safe. You don't have to worry about a buildup in there, but if you spread it directly on your food or, or like if you're using it to kill bugs and, and it happened to get some overspray in your dog's food, you're like, oh, I don't want that poison to hurt my dog. It's not going to hurt your dog. It's not going to hurt you. Um, so that's one of the things I like about it because it's in on all, in, in on, on all food commodities. Um, so that's why I think it makes it a little bit different than some of these other things. So that, I just wanted to share that with you as a side note, because I thought you, uh, you might want to know about that. Ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the day, it's not just about growing your food. It's also about feeling good about what you produce for your loved ones. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe only on Perfect Gardens TV. We're going to be getting started in a new grow series. I'm very excited to get this one started. Not only are we going to be popping some awesome new genetics, but we're also going to be kicking off the series using the Mars Hydro FCE 6500 bar style light with manual dimmer switch. And this thing is pumping out a whopping 720 watts from the wall.